Sinetto. Your data, our business. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your busy schedule in order to be here today. Together, we will be covering the menacingly named GDPR. Now, I don't know which dark corner of the European bureaucracy gave birth to this particular acronym, but behind these simple letters is a piece of legislation which will affect every business in the European Union. And for our UK friends who are about to jump ship, so to speak, it will also affect every company outside the EU who handles personal data belonging to EU citizens. That's pretty much all the companies that are out there. In order to make sure I don't bore you so much that you fall asleep in front of your computers, because let's face it, talking to IT people about legislation usually has this effect, today's webinar will have a practical approach. While, yes, we will be discussing the impact of this regulation and the changes it brings about for companies big and small in the first part of the webinar, the second part will be a practical live demo of how Sonetto products can help you comply with particular articles of the GDPR. Now, no single product can ensure complete GDPR compliance, but a Sonetto hyperconverged infrastructure can tick a lot of the boxes concerning data security, recoverability, confidentiality, limited downtime, and data corruption. Before we move on, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Dragos Kioran. I am a technical marketer with Sonetto. I've been with the company for the past eight years, years uh, and the powers that be have also decided to entrust me with the hat of VP of Marketing. My personal contact information is displayed uh, on the screen right there, so please feel free to get in touch with me if you have any questions which are not related to today's webinar. For any questions you might have about the webinar and about the GDPR, you can use the chat box uh, inside the webinar application to write all the questions. We will attempt to answer any of them at the end of this webinar. On to the GDPR itself. Now, the acronym stands for the General Data Protection Regulation. This is a huge set of European Union rules which will come into effect in May of this year. It will affect every business inside or outside the union which handles the personal data of EU citizens. What this legislation does is it unifies and improves the separate and complex regulations concerning data protection for the citizens of the EU that existed up to this point. So the GDPR is meant to basically replace the Data Protection Directive number 46 of the European Commission which essentially dates back all the way to 1995. Now, according to the EU itself, the GDPR was, quote, designed to harmonize data privacy laws across Europe to protect and empower all EU citizens uh, in regards to data privacy and to reshape the way organizations across the region approach data privacy. Now, large enterprises with the money and manpower to implement complex procedures and technologies like those required by the GDPR will have an easier time of it. For small and medium businesses, so 99% of companies in Europe, implementing everything they need to comply in order to comply with the GDPR will be much tougher. So this is where Sinetto comes into play, ladies and gentlemen. What we are best at is bringing very complicated enterprise technologies to the small and medium business space. We take the cutting edge of enterprise IT, simplify it along the way, and package it into products designed for small and medium businesses in terms of workload and price. In fact, that is our mission. We believe in a world where strong, innovative, small businesses can compete with the corporate giants on the same technological footing. And GDPR compliance is no different from this aspect. Our all-in-one IT infrastructures, as we design them, are products that allow a small business to achieve compliancy using the same powerful technologies which are used by Fortune 500 companies. The GDPR might be a big headache for many companies. So why do we need it, you might ask? Well, because in the last 20 years or so, the way businesses work has changed a lot. I mean, technical innovations and globalization means that virtually every company now handles personal data of their customers in one way or another. 
If this data is not properly handled and protected, it can lead to it being exploited in many ways which are damaging to both the companies and the customers. So I don't think I have to remind you of the increasing frequency and the giant consequences of cyber attacks around the world lately. Most of these vulnerabilities uh, exist precisely because the legislation has yet to catch up with the rapid uh, technological process that we're, uh, progress that we're uh, witnessing. So that's why the GDPR is both good and necessary at this time. But how can not complying affect you? Data protection has been an important aspect of IT operations for a long time. Now, though, thanks to the GDPR, businesses will have a legal obligation to ensure data is properly protected and handled. So failing to do this can have a very negative impact on companies and organizations. But how bad exactly? And what does this entail? We're, well, first off, businesses and organizations who breach the GDPR can be fined up to 4% of annual global turnover or 20 million euros, so whichever is greater. In order to avoid this huge and practically unnecessary loss of money, businesses will have to invest in IT infrastructures and internal procedures, which can ensure compliancy. Secondly, as we well know, businesses spend a lot of time and resources building their reputation, their um, brand. In case of a data breach, all the trust a company has built with their customers can be lost. In that case, customers can turn to the competition or um, even worse, a customer's data, your customer's data might wind up uh, in the hands of the competition. And I'm pretty sure every company wants to avoid this. And lastly, after the GDPR comes into effect, companies which do not comply demonstrate a sort of lack of ability to protect their customers' data. This will inevitably lead uh, to a loss of reputation and a loss of business opportunities. So what are some of the biggest changes that the GDPR will bring about? Let's quickly go over them and see what's going to happen. As previously mentioned, uh, penalties. Not complying with the GDPR will be punished with rough fines. 4% of annual global turnover or 20 million euros. Every company must appoint a data protection officer. So this is a person that um, has, they become the data controller, the data processor uh, of the company. And he can be a member of the staff or uh, he, there can be a another company that's hired to take care of this, an external contractor, but every company must essentially have an assigned data protection officer who can prove to the authorities that uh, compliance with the GDPR is being met. Consent. Uh, the GDPR also uh, have wants to ensure that individuals are properly asked for consent uh, in managing their data. So individual must be able to also withdraw uh, their consent uh, just as easily as they originally gave it to a company that is handling their data. There must also be a right to access and a right to be forgotten. So all companies uh, who process an, process an individual's sorry, uh, data will be obliged to provide them with a copy of their data if asked uh, and with information about where their data is being stored and processed. Uh, they will also have to delete or stop sharing the data to third parties if this is requested. A really, a really important uh, aspect of the GDPR is privacy by design. Now, this is a, an, a heavy expression. It, it says a lot, but basically what it means is that companies will be responsible for ensuring data protection also on a technical level by implementing the appropriate means. So data protection can no longer be treated as an additional task, but must be a default feature of the systems, of the IT systems that companies use. Breach notifications uh, will be mandatory for companies and it will be mandatory for them to notify both customers uh, and uh, data controllers um, within, uh, within 72 hours of a uh, data breach. So this in the inability to do this 
may result in paying the large fines that we uh, previously mentioned. Another important aspect that we also previously mentioned, but is worth building upon is the extraterritorial uh, applicability of the GDPR, because it applies to companies and organizations that process the personal data of EU individuals, regardless of the company's location. This means that if a non-EU company does business in Europe, uh, it will also have to comply with the GDPR. And lastly, uh, data portability. So individuals will have the right to transfer their data uh, from one company or one organization, one controller, uh, as the legislation calls the company that has the personal data, uh, to another. The companies handling this data will have to be able to share it in a commonly used format. So uh, you have to, basically you have to be in possession of a IT system uh, that allows you to keep that data in a format that is uh, easily shareable with another entity if somebody asks for their uh, data to be transferred. Um, so now let's get to the interesting part. Um, how can how can a Sonero solution help with GDPR compliancy? Looking, so standing back and uh, looking at the big picture, because uh, we will also be looking at what articles the GDPR of the GDPR Sonetto helps you comply with. Uh, the Sonetto product helps you achieve two main aspects. First of all, it is designed from the get-go to offer a high level of data protection and recoverability, as well as a really low downtime and protection against data corruption. This is the privacy by design aspect mentioned earlier in the GDPR discussion. Every Sonetto Hyper Series product can create up to 1,440 backups, so that's one every minute, for every virtual machine or file on the infrastructure right out of the box. So it can also replicate these backups to a separate disaster recovery unit, which is always sold as an integral part of the product. If something happens, it takes only 15 minutes to restart the infrastructure on the DR unit and resume operations. This is something um, essential to the GDPR. Also for security purposes, uh, the replicated backups are also encrypted. So that means nobody can intercept them along the way, okay? Uh, and second of all, it gives the uh, controller or the data protection officer visibility and transparency into all the protection mechanisms working on their infrastructure. This means that a company with Sonetto can easily prove their data is completely protected and recoverable uh, during any kind of uh, inspection, during any point that they have to prove that the regulations of the GDPR, and we'll see what articles exactly uh, this uh, touches upon, uh, that they're being uh, compliant with these articles. Also, the Hyper Series uh, integrates with uh, Microsoft Active Directory, uh, as we'll see uh, in the articles. Um, having that data in a secure place, so having a data access security platform uh, is absolutely essential. Microsoft Active Directory is the platform that is used around the world, the main platform that is used to provide data access security. And our integration with it makes sure that only the people with the right credentials have access to the data. So um, what I will show you today is how Sonetto actually happens to comply, how helps you to comply with uh, a few of the articles of the GDPR. Um, they are the technical aspects, basically. There's a lot of organizational changes that companies have to put into place in order to comply with the GDPR, uh, but there are also some technical aspects which pertain to the specific IT infrastructure and what that you have and what it can offer you. So that's what I will be attempting to show you today. Um, first off, um, Article 32, this deals with data confidentiality. So, and the fact that you need to recover quickly from a downside, uh, from a downtime incident. Here, I will show you how Sonetto, uh, first of all, integrates with Microsoft Active Directory to provide uh, the aforementioned 
access control. Basically, this makes sure that only other authorized employees have access to the data or authorized persons. And to showcase how fast you can be up and running if something goes wrong, we will recover a virtual machine which might contain your customer's personal data uh, from the DR unit. Um, this presumes that uh, something has gone wrong with the primer unit, so it is down due to an unforeseen event. Uh, this can be anything from a natural disaster or you know, somebody's clumsiness in the data center. Uh, that's article uh, 32. So it regards data with regards to data confidentiality and the ability to recover quickly. Uh, article 24, on the other hand, deals with the corruption of data. So, while Sonetto has a powerful set of anti-data corruption technologies, uh, these work silently in the background. It's uh, a process that works automatically through uh, very smart checksums and other technologies. And it basically, if it detects that any blocks of data are corrupted, it self heals them. Now, while I can't go into that, uh, I can go into a different set of measures that we use. So on top of the anti-data corruption technologies, Synet also has an advanced automatic backup system, which ensures there is always uh, a first and a second copy so two adjacent copies of the data which are safe from corruption. And here I will show you uh, our backup and replication system and how insanely easy and simple it is to provide complete uh, data protection uh, across your infrastructure. And finally, Article 5 of the GDPR is all about how secure and recoverable your data is in case of anything from a natural disaster or cyber attack. And to illustrate the power of Sonetto in this case, I will intentionally infect uh, a system with ransomware uh, and recover it from a previous backup. So without further ado, uh, let's head over to our demo infrastructure. Uh, what I have here is a classic hyper series um, machine that we use for demo purposes. We have a primary unit. Uh, you can see its dashboard right here and a secondary DR unit. First of all, uh, let's illustrate our powerful backup and uh, replication that we do. Uh, we can see that we have here a Windows 10 machine that currently uh, it is protected, but it has a daily backup. So as you can see here in the schedules section, uh, it does a backup every day and keeps 30 copies of it locally on the primary unit while uh, replicating backups to the VR unit and keeping 60 of those copies. Now, for the purposes of this demo, I will first illustrate how e easy it is to create these backups. Uh, and then we will also replicate them to the DR unit because later on uh, we will want to recover this VM on the DR unit itself. So uh, first off, let's change um, our backup schedule. Uh, it already has a daily one, but let's add one every minute. We will do a snapshot every minute. We will keep 10 of those while at the same time we will replicate these snapshots to the hyper series dr unit and keep 30 of those basically that's it this this type of schedule has a lot of flexibility you can implement any kind of sla that you need for your data you might decide that uh, some uh, virtual machines or some file shares are more important than others and you need a greater greater granularity to your SLAs and you can definitely do that. You can decide that locally you want to do a snapshot every 10 minutes uh, but only replicate to the DR unit once a day in order to provide long-term recoverability. So. Um, if you look at the screen on the protect and replicate screen, uh, we are looking at the data stores section. Now, um, 
a policy that we do and we recommend that all our customers uh, put into place is that they use a single data store for every VM. This makes things much more granular and much more easier to understand. So um, what has happened now is we introduced uh, a new backup schedule every minute. Uh, it has already done a snapshot. It has already done a backup, which uh, is now being replicated to the DR unit. Uh, at the same time, you can create the same sort of granular backups for every file share that you have. I'm going to take this moment to remind you that um, the hyper series does not only is, is a hyper converged infrastructure, but it takes hyper convergence to the next level. So not only do you have uh, your applications and your, you know, your storage, your compute and your networking converge, but it also converges everything with regards to native file sharing, as well as disaster recovery. Basically, this is what you're looking at. You're looking at the uh, disaster recovery side where you can protect with backups, both virtual machines and file shares. If you look at this file share, it's called volume. This has a snapshot every minute and there are, there are 60 snapshots that are uh, kept locally. Okay, uh, let's, let's also have a quick look uh, at our access security. Uh, up here in the work group and or domain side, uh, we can see that there is a native Active Directory integration feature. Now, in order to connect with Active Directory, what you simply have to do is provide the proper credentials uh, in, for your domain, for your Active Directory domain server, and then simply hit the join button. Uh, this will take a few seconds, but essentially everything is completely integrated and in, with regards to uh, accessing Active Directory. Now, uh, to see exactly how this works, we can take a look at um, our Active Directory server, which happens to be a, a virtual machine running inside this hyper-converged uh, infrastructure. Now, um, let me just send a input the password if we if we take a look at um, our active directory uh, users and computers uh, we can see here that um, mr john smith has already uh, received permission to access uh, any any sort of file he might want now uh, let's move back to mr john smith's machine which is this Windows 10 right here, which we'll access now so we can illustrate uh, how domain access control uh, actually works. Here's Mr. Uh, John Smith's machine. So you can see it's uh, John Smith. And if, if we take a look back on the native file sharing on the shares page, uh, we can see that there is a shared folder called uh, documents, uh, which can be accessed by uh, everybody who has active directory permissions. And if we head back to Mr. John Smith's machine and uh, we open up a uh, Windows Explorer, uh, we can see on the network uh, that uh, he has access to the to all this information. Okay, so um, moving on, let's see how um, how easy it is to recover a virtual machine in case uh, something goes wrong. This might be a virtual machine that uh, runs your accounting software and keeps the personal data of uh, all your customers. So we are now on the DR unit. So the DR unit has received um, backups from the main unit. And if you remember, uh, we started a, uh, a backup schedule for uh, our Windows uh, 10 machine. And it's incredibly easy to recover this data. You simply have to go into the browse snapshots and here we can see 
all of these snapshots that uh, were taken uh, during today and we have the ability to recover from any one of these snapshots. We can even go and recover from a snapshot from yesterday. Um, but let's recover this one. We simply hit clone. Uh, it will look at what virtual machines there are inside the data store and we simply hit the clone button. Now what this does is it uh, automates uh, something that was a uh, pretty difficult um, process in the past. Uh, it uh, takes the machine, it retrieves the data from the backup, it does all the networking in the back, it registers the virtual machine uh, in the hypervisor, and it prepares it, it brings it to a state that allows you to restart it. So this is a scenario where your uh, main, your primary unit is down, and you have to recover it quickly. As you can see, we've commenced this process uh, uh, less than a minute ago, and we are almost done. So it basically takes, what we guarantee is it takes under 15 minutes to recover your uh, infrastructure, but uh, it takes a lot less than that to recover something like uh, a single VM, for instance. This is an essential part uh, of the GDPR. Uh, it clearly states uh, in Article 32, uh, as well as in Article 5, that you must be prepared uh, in case of a disaster, you have to be able to recover your uh, infrastructure quickly. Now, uh, while, we, uh, while this uh, machine uh, recovers the DVM, and it seems to have finished, so cloning was successful. Uh, okay. Now, the virtual machine is basically prepared. You can see here, this is a, uh, with the Windows 10 uh, on the demo system uh, that was uh, taken from the clone that we did at uh, 5 and 25. So now this is ready to be powered on. We simply have to click the power on button and uh, just wait the uh, appropriate amount of time for a uh, Windows machine to start working. As you can see here, it is uh, now booting up and in just a few seconds, we will again have access to the customer's data uh, inside. Now, going back to the Hyper uh, Series primary machine. Let's attempt to see what would happen if uh, something would go wrong because of a cyber attack. So this is something that um, happens very often lately. Uh, as we see here, we have a lot of a lot of snapshots which uh, have been done recently due to the schedule that we initially implemented. So let's go on Mr. John Smith's machine and unleash something horrible. Uh, this is your run of the mill, uh, wanna cry. Okay, there we go. Our wanna cry virus. This is your run of the mill crypto virus uh, has been unleashed upon the system. This is a bad situation. Everything is gone. This might have infected other VMs, but um, the recovery procedure uh, is the same. We can now close this. Uh, this machine is, is basically gone. There's nothing we can do about it. Uh, so we might as well power it off. So let's go and recover this. We can go back in time to, let's say, um, a few minutes ago and just clone this machine. It will clone both the virtual machine and the data store in the back that uh, provides its storage. And what this does is it will render the malware harmless. It would it will take us back in time to the moment before this virtual machine was infected. Basically, 
this is um, not, not not only do you not have to pay zilch uh, to the people that encrypted your data, uh, but uh, at the same time, any kind of uh, crypto virus is render, rendered harmless. And the problem with systems, with antivirus systems, is that it, they're always one step behind the people that are making uh, the viruses because uh, they, it takes, it's t it takes uh, the software companies uh, a bit of time to catch up to uh, make something, uh, to make a cure for a certain virus. But with this type of technology, you can just go back in time to before your data was infected. As we can see here, we simply need to power it on and everything that was uh, encrypted, uh, everything, all the data, all your important data uh, that was encrypted by the crypto virus uh, is now back to the state it was exactly before um, the attack happened. Now, you can clone uh, a, a big amount of machines, so you can accurately pinpoint by using this very simple calendar option that we've implemented, you can accurately pinpoint the exact moment before your VM was infected. Of course, it largely depends on uh, the granularity or uh, of your backups and the SLAs that you have in place. And there we go. The machine is completely ransomware free. So this was before uh, I even found out the password to uh, the archive that contains the the ransomware itself. And a further feature is that, let's say you decided this is uh, the uh, important data that uh, you want to keep. And uh, basically you can use it uh, without any, any further issues from this point, without having to worry uh, about the ransomware and of course complying with the GDPR because that's literally how uh, big of an amount of time you need to recover uh, anything. Uh, it's basically it's just a few minutes and this is regardless of the size of the VM or the size of the file share because absolutely the same recovery technique uh, can be applied to uh, file shares uh, as well as applications running on Sonero systems. Uh, that's it from my side. Uh, thank you very much again for, uh, for, for stopping by and for taking a few minutes out of your day uh, to participate in our webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, write them in um, in the webinar app, and we will be more than happy to to answer them for you. There don't seem to be any questions right now. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, many thanks for having participated in our webinar. You can also download our solution brief um, where we talk about the GDPR and how Sonetto helps you solve uh, the different challenges and compliance. It's available as a handout in this webinar. And um, of course, you can also download it from the Sonetto website. If you have any other questions related or non-related to GDPR, please get in touch with us. Uh, we will be more than happy to answer them. Thank you again for your time today uh, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.